Hello and welcome to another episode of Webflow and Code where I teach you the underlying code you're writing in Webflow. In this episode, I'm going to talk about a feature or an aspect of Webflow that doesn't really get spoken about and I think people are a bit confused by, and that is the high DPI or the at 2x property that you can add to images. And I hope you like the setup. This is probably the most YouTuber friendly setup I've had, although the lighting could be a little less harsh, but hey ho, I'm a traveler. This is how it goes. So we have to explain this in a few different ways, and I'm sorry it has to be a little bit boring, but let's just let's just crack on with it. It all comes down to what we consider a kind of traditional pixel size. Let's take a 12 inch monitor as an example. In those 12 inches, you would maybe have 800 pixels by 600 pixels. And this is traditionally how you guys would design your web page. Even just having a look at Figma, what the default dimensions are, you would typically design everything, all your graphics, with a pretty old standard in mind. So as an example, a 14 inch MacBook Pro frame inside of Figma is 1512 pixels wide. Now, realistically, a 14 inch MacBook Pro actually has a 3024 by 1964. Now, if you do the maths, then 1512, which is what Figma tell you, is double the resolution of a MacBook screen. But the way we design things, it's much more manageable if we think about the graphics in a quote unquote traditional sense, right? So what happens is if you create a graphic that's say 400 pixels wide by 600 pixels tall, as an example, if this was to be displayed on an 800 by 600 screen, traditional screen, it would take up half of that screen. But if you imagine you display that same image on a retina screen, it will take up a quarter of that image. We're just using numbers that are easier to work out in our minds at the moment, okay? You could scale that image up, but as you know, when you scale a pixeled image up, it starts to pixelate. So we have to think of things in the reverse. We want to make things bigger than what they are going to be displayed and then scale them down to maintain that clarity. And that's where the high DPI or the at 2x, I don't know why they don't name them the same thing, uh, checkbox comes into play. The next part of this is actually preparing your images so that they work correctly in these, um, in these modes. And as I said before, Figma, you are encouraged to create things at a resolution that sort of works with your brain, right? That's easy to understand. And so go, you go ahead and you create your graphics the, uh, the size that you want them to be relative to the frame size that you're working with, which as we know is using those kind of traditional sizes. When you go to export that image, if it's a pixel image, I mean, when you're working with vectors, it doesn't really matter or SVGs it doesn't really matter. When you go to export that, you'll see a drop down, and that's where you're gonna wanna select 2x. What that will do, that will double the size, the export will be double the size of the graphic that you've created inside of Figma. And you've obviously got times four, times five, all the rest of it. But the sciencey bit here is the way that I works, really you can't see anything better than double, you know, 2x, right? So I've said it in my 3JS series, anything above 2x is kind of really just snake oil. So you'll export those graphics at always at 2x. And when you upload those to Webflow, you would check that box to say that it is actually double the size that you want it to be visible on the screen. Webflow is writing a bunch of code to basically say on a old traditional size screen, display this image at half the size that the file is. And then on retina displays, display at the full size. It's maintaining that clarity and it's maintaining that uh, pixel perfection that you need from those images. As long as the source images that you use in Figma are big enough so that it's not scaling that image up when you export it at 2x, it's merely taking from a much larger image so in fact it's actually scaling down under the hood. As long as your source imagery that you've made is big enough to, to compensate for that at 2x export, then you should have no problems and you shouldn't see any sort of degradation in quality whatsoever. 
So in almost all circumstances, you should be using that high DPI checkbox. It's just whether you've prepared the graphics and prepared the imagery to compensate for that. I see a lot of people uh, confused that it's making the images smaller, but what you want to do is make them super big, and then what it will do will make them smaller to the size that you're expected or the size that you're designing inside of Figma. I hope this was helpful. Ask me any questions in the comment box if you need anything clarified, and I'll see you in the next one.